Welcome back, folks. Well, just the other day, I was having a conversation with a friend of mine, and uh, he's a, a, an old school guy like me. And he was talking about function generators and stuff like that. And then he, he wanted to know what DDS function generators were. And I said, well, you just look it up. It's called uh, direct digital synthesis. And uh, well, I mean, he comes from the time when, you know, function generators were all completely analog devices. However, today, even cheap function generators like this FG100 are DDS devices as is this JDS 6600 here. You know, this is quite a bit more money. I think it's about $150, $160, and then something like this here, which is around about five or $600. So, and going up, nobody does analog function generators anymore. Um, they're all using some form of DDS. So, well, what, what is DDS? So look, this is a, a typical DDS system here. So if you look at it, you, you have a main processor, and you have stored waveform tables. They could be a sine wave, a cardioid pulse wave, you know, any kind of wave you want. Some of them could be rewritable, so you can put in arbitrary waveforms. Basically, what they are is a digital representation of the waveform. So all the values through a complete cycle of the waveform at the highest resolution possible for the particular device. Then you have a processor. So the processor will take the input from the, the UI, whatever it is. It could be uh, through some sort of um, remote control from a computer. It could be through a front panel interface. And it takes the requirements for whatever signal needs to be processed. Uh, if it's built in or if it's an arbitrary one, what it does is it then calculates through a fancy name here. It's called phase accumulator. But, you know, it that's just a fancy term for how fast it has to go through a particular table and what phase angle it needs to access for each step of the way. You know, let's say a sine wave would, would have, uh, like, it would have a complete waveform would look something like this in there. And... It, you could have maybe a million points uh, making up that waveform to, in order to get the absolute best resolution. So what the phase accumulator does is it just takes your requirement. You say you want, I want to display that sine wave at 10 megahertz. Well, then it, it goes through some calculations, determines whether or not it can display the entire table at that speed or whether it has to split it up into phase increments. So let's say it has to split it up into 360 different slices. So that each slice is then a phase of one degree apart. So it goes through this table one degree at a time and then takes in the value and sends it out as a time dependent signal, digital signal to the digital to analog converter. And also depending on what you want, it is, you know, depending on the device to the sophistication of it, the processor would have control of the output conditioning. So that'd be all your filtering, amplification, offsets, termination, et cetera, et cetera, whatever you, whatever you want the output to look like, other than, of course, the waveform, which is produced by the digital to analog converter. Now, these digital to analog converters uh, can be either very, very simple or very, very sophisticated. For instance, on this device and this device, both of these use what are called R2R ladders. So basically they have a parallel output and then they have a, a bunch of resistors in a certain configuration called an R2R ladder that then meters out the digital information as a voltage. And we'll get into that in a minute, a little bit more. But that's basically what uh, direct digital synthesis is. So you're, you're, you're taking a digital form of the waveform, presenting it to, to a digital analog converter and then outputting it. It's quite simple to understand. The secret of it is in the waveform tables and in this thing called the phase accumulator, which again is, is just a fancy name for how the processor calculates how quickly it's got to step through and how far each step needs to be through each one of these waveform tables in order to produce the output that you requested. So that's all there really is to it. Um, so, well, let's, let's have a look at it. Let's, let, let's build a, a very, very simple DDS generator. And this is what we're going to use here. So all I'm going to use is a, a 74LS163 binary counter. And this is going to provide us with our time-dependent digital signal. And you're going to get a clock coming in here. And this is going to count off from 0, 1, 2, all the way up to 15. 
and it's going to use this this analog converter which is this r2r ladder i talked about previously and i'm not going to get into the math of this I, I got stung by getting into too much math recently but if you if you want to study ohm's law and thevenin's theorem um, that'll give you everything you need to be able to figure out how this does its job and uh, it's it's really just a series of voltage dividers that will sum together the, the different voltages that are being output from this. So as the, the number of bits increase and as the significance of the bits increase, it produces a higher and higher voltage. Now, ideally, this is what it would look like. It would have these perfect little steps going up. Each one is going to be just precise. And you can, you can actually make R2R ladders this nice. They'd be absolutely almost perfect. But in this case, I've had experience with uh, 74 LS series logic. And uh, unfortunately, there's no guarantee that any of these outputs here are going to be exactly the same. And they have to be. So this depends on both the output being able to drive high and being able to pull low in order to work properly. And on a, any given chip like this, uh, that's not going to be consistent across the output. So it's very it's very unlikely we're going to get a beautiful output like this. Now you can with CMOS, uh, but I don't have a CMOS binary counter. And also has to be a synchronous counter. So all the outputs have to switch at the same time. Otherwise you get all sorts of strange little glitches as uh, you know, ripple counters go through from one output to the next. So you need a, a synchronous counter and I don't happen to have a CMOS synchronous counter. But if I delve into this a little bit more in the future, I can use uh, CMOS devices. And as far as the resistors go, yeah, I'm going to be using 1% tolerance resistors because that's mostly what I have around here. That can make a difference too, especially if you have more than 16 steps. Like if you had an 8-bit signal coming into it, an 8-bit DAC here, then the most significant bit, if it's up by 1%, can be considerable, seeing as each individual step is way less than 1%. So what I would generally do in a case like that, I'd, I'd make the more significant 2R values adjustable. So I put in adjustable resistors, or maybe even the most significant 3. In this case, we won't bother with that. We'll just uh, build up this little circuit and hope for the best that it kind of demonstrates what we're going to do here. And what we're going to do is, is going to just produce this ramp waveform here, which is actually pretty hard to produce from analog. DDS makes the, the job much, much simpler. Because once you have the infrastructure, once you have this infrastructure in place, it doesn't matter what waveform is in there. So it, any of these slots, any of these waveform tables can be a waveform of any type. And it, it really doesn't matter to the processor. It's just going to follow the waveform table, output that, and you can get any sort of complex, horrible, ridiculous waveform you want out of a direct digital synthesis arbitrary waveform generator. Things you cannot do with analog generators. Okay, so enough of my blabbing about it. Let's go down into the lab. We'll put this circuit together and we'll hook it up and have a look at it. We'll see you down there. Okay, here we are. Here's the 74LS163. Here is the, all the resistors here have uh, got to do with the R2R ladder. Uh, I decided I'll go with 20K and 10K as the 10K is the R, 20K is the 2R, rather than the 1.6 and 1.8 and 3.6 that I showed in the, the theory section. And uh, it's all hooked up and ready to go. Uh, we just got to connect everything up to it. Now I'm going to use this little ZB154 Pro scope as both the driving oscillator and as the uh, monitor for the output. And uh, so let's let's start hooking things up here. So we get it's just this to five volts. Close enough. Turn it off for now. We'll hook it up. here. I should put a little rubber feet on this. And the scope probe set on 10x. Yep. Uh, we'll put that on the output here. And 
And we'll turn this on. I'm going to set up the function generator. Okay, set it 10 kilohertz. I'm going to set it to 16 kilohertz because we're going to get basically divide by 16 here. So the output should be a ramp at approximately 1 kilohertz. Okay, that's good. And well, let's turn it on, see what we got. Okay, let's do an auto setup here. Okay, it looks like we got a ramp. Let me uh, stretch it out a little bit this way. Oops. And this way. And we'll move it down a bit here. All right, as expected, it's not a perfect. Uh, it's not a perfect ladder there or step. So yeah, it's a that's the failing of the seventy four LS logic. It yeah. it's not too bad though. It's, it's actually it might be even a little bit better than I expected. It looks like right here, when we switch from the first three bits to the fourth bit going on, it kind of doesn't it doesn't go up at all. It stays at the same level. So that should be a little bit higher there. So that it looks like that fourth bit is maybe a little bit weak and it looks like the second bit or third bit is a little bit strong. You can't we can't do much about it. Uh, if I made all these adjustable resistors so you could uh, you could adjust all that out. But that's it here. We got we got our frequency of one kilohertz, which is what we were after. We've got a peak to peak voltage of about four volts. And yeah, that's so there there it is. That's a very simple DDS ramp generator. And that's how it's done. You produce a digital time varying digital signal, pass it through a digital to analog converter, and you get your analog output. Well, yeah, you'd on top of this you'd probably need to put in some output conditioning like filtering and offset and whatever else you need, but uh this does demonstrate the basic idea of what uh direct digital synthesis is. All right, folks. Well, that's all I really had for you. And uh, it looks like Christmas will be a couple of days, so I won't see you until after Christmas. So have you guys a very, very good Christmas. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. And uh, if you have a chance over the Christmas holidays, do some electronics. And here's some festive lighting for you. Happy holidays, everyone. Bye-bye.